I woke up one morning and everything that ignited my passion for the job was gone. Don't go too far on the path you know there is no future in it. I just went on Canva, designed a flyer, Diction mm. Coaches Meet and Grit. And for the first time I met about, I think it was about 30 to 40 allocations. Today, Association mm. of Diction Coaches of Nigeria has chapters in almost all the states of the Federation. The thing about success is that it is very fleeting. And for many of us who have achieved significant dreams over and over again, you'd realize mm. that after that event, your life is asking for one more. It mm. means that you have challenged yourself and you want to break your own record. You're listening to the Driven Introvert Podcast a faith-inspired space for purposeful introverts who are ready to step out with courage and pursue their big ideas. If you are an introvert who is tired of letting fear dictate what you do and how you do it, then this podcast is for you. I'm here to remind you that the life and work you've dreamed about is possible and your unique personality is not a limitation to achieving it. I'm your host, Remy Roy, and I'm the co-founder of ShePacked.com. On this podcast, I'll feature introverts and others with unique perspectives on what it means to follow dreams, passionately build out ideas, and live a life that matters. Expect inspiring conversations, resources, reflections, and stories on faith, life, and work. Thanks for joining me today. In today's episode, I'm bringing you a conversation with Ayofe Wale Ojo. Ayofe is an entrepreneur addiction coach and elocutionist. She is the lead trainer at Queen's Diction and Social Polish Academy and also the pioneer and founding president of the Association of Diction Coaches of Nigeria. Ayofit knows what it feels like to take a giant step into the unknown on a wing and a prayer. We discuss her journey into entrepreneurship and what it takes to pursue a dream that others may not understand. We talk about why you must take a bold step of faith because on the other side are people waiting to walk that journey with you. We also talk about the power of consistency in showing up for your dream. You're going to love this one. Let's go. All right. Hi, Ayofe. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Romy. The pleasure is all mine. I'm excited to be here again. (laughs) Oh my God. I kn- I am glad you said that because this kind yeah. of feels, it feels like deja vu for me. <laughs> I'm because telling you. I know for everyone listening, this is actually the second time I'm interviewing Ayofe on a podcast. I had a podcast in my past life. And yes, we, <laughs> I call it my past life, you know, but we had a great conversation on there. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited that you said yes to joining me again, friend. Thank you. And guess what? I'm looking forward to many years down the line again. After I have many know. milestones and I we're know. back here and I'm saying thank you for having Absolutely. me here yeah. again and again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're going to do it. There's so much more ground to cover, Absolutely. so much more things to do in the future, you know, so much Absolutely. to look forward to. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. So I'm going to just get into it straight again. Okay? I'm going to start with a heavy one because I am very familiar with being in this headspace. Years ago, Ayofe, you found yourself at a point in your life where your profession as a broadcaster you know, which you really loved and you were really passionate about, it no longer felt fulfilling or something that you wanted to do every day. So you quit, which is a big deal, right? Let's dig into that. Tell me what event led up to that moment when you decided, okay, I I need something else. I need to do something else. I need to figure out a different reality for myself. And what happened when you took that step? Let's backtrack and give a little context to my response. Mm-hmm. All my life, I always wanted to be a broadcaster. I mean, growing up, I think as a child, I remember every day sitting by the television set and having a conversation with my father. And we were watching the news, Cyril Stova, Eugenia Arbo. Oh my God, those names. I would watch yes. them cast the, I mean, the Gen Z would not, cannot even relate to those names. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Cyril Stova, Eugenia Arbo, I would watch them time and again mm-hmm. on the news. And I would tell my father of blessed memory that mm-hmm. I would like to be a broadcaster. I would like to be a newscaster. Even when I didn't know what it was all about. I was in primary school. Hmm. Again, I was with a friend in primary school. We're seated by a swing. 
she asked me, what would you like to be? I think I asked her first. She told me, I can't remember what she said, but I also recall telling her that I, I will become a broadcaster. Mm. And mm. after my secondary school, I was in the arts. Again, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't lose focus knowing that if I want to be a broadcaster or a newscaster, I had to be in arts class. I mm-hmm. don't know how it played out in secondary school where mm-hmm. there were brilliant students were the ones that would go to science class. Yes. <laughs> out of all of my friends, all of my friends went to the sciences and we just had this idea about the sciences, the science class that, oh, these are the the ways these are yeah, the, those are the nerds. Ones. Yeah. yeah, these are yes. the nerds. <laughs> but again, I knew that if I want to be a newscaster, I had to, to be in the arts. And I enjoyed the arts. Literature was my best subject. Mm. I loved government. I loved all the arts inclined courses mm. or subjects. And then I went to my arts class. After secondary school, I gained admission, studied mass communication, and my whole path just led me to becoming a newscaster. Mm. I graduated, I think less than a year after graduation, I got my first job in a television house, DBN Television in Lekki. It's about mm-hmm. the first private television station in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. I started my career there and I loved it. I would cast the news, I would present, I would report, I would produce. I was mm-hmm. working almost 24 hours in oh. days. Oh my God. And yet I enjoyed it. It was mm. everything. I never mm. complained. The pay was poor. Mm. Yet I loved it. Mm. And I did that. I moved from DBN. I went to MITV, Star FM. I was on television. I was on radio. And I loved it. Mm. But I woke up one morning and everything that fueled my passion, that ignited my passion for the job was gone. Everything. Mm. I would wake up and I would endure the workplace. Mm. I would look at the time, hoping and waiting for it Mm. to be close time so I could go home. Go home. And then I started thinking about this. I did everything for them to fire me because I didn't have the courage to resign. I'm telling you, I didn't have the courage (laughs) to resign. And I would be lackadaisical with my work, Mm. not weekly and daily deliverables. Intentionally, mm. I, I wouldn't deliver in those jobs or mm. those tasks, hoping that I beg, me cannot tell me, make a go because I didn't <laughs> have the courage. But again, I couldn't deny myself that wasn't me because I would get mm. to work and I had access to internet. We had access to unlimited internet I w- and I would download movies and I would mo- watch movies. Oh my God. After a while, I said, this is not you. Mm. How come you're becoming who you are not? Hmm. And I just had to write that resignation letter and hmm. I submitted it. I had no idea what I was going to do next. Hmm. I had no idea where I was going. Hmm. I just thought maybe I needed a break. Hmm. Maybe I needed a break. Maybe I'm overwhelmed. Maybe I'm stressed. Maybe get this break and see if you would get this passion back and then you would come. So hmm. I resigned. Unfortunately, it was about the time I was going for my master's. I went for my master's and I came back on the job with another media house. I went to Radio Continental and then it was the same thing. And I said, no, no, I am not doing this because I believe strongly, like I shared with you earlier, Remy, that there are two places anyone cannot afford to be unhappy. Hmm. The first is your home. Hmm. Whether you are married or not, hmm. your home being with your parents you cannot afford not to be happy mm. from the home you come from as an unmarried yeah. person. And mm-hmm. as a married person, you cannot afford to be unhappy with your spouse, with your husband, with your wife, and second, with the work you do. Mm. Because that's where you live 80% of your life. Well, I lived in Lagos and I know how crazy Lagos was. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. When I was working, I would bring me... My morning show when I was on television was 7 a.m. Mm. But I was also the producer, which mm. means that as a producer, an hour before you go on air, you have you to be there. finished your pre-production. Oh. And that, that was 6 a.m. The show mm. went 7 a.m. So 6 a.m. Mm. I had to be at work. 4 a.m. every day. 
I would leave the house, mm-hmm. get to my office at about 5.30 so I could start my pre-production. Mm-hmm. And then the news, the primetime news was 10 p.m., mm. 10 to 11. I would mm. leave office at 11. Mm. I would get home maybe at about 12, 12.30, mm. and I would wake again at 3. That was the life. So how can you do that <laughs> and not be happy at what you do? Oh, no. I know. That's a big amount of time every day to spend being miserable if you're miserable at work. But let me dig into that a little bit. So you said you woke up with money and somehow the passion was gone. So do you think it was mostly the stress of the job, the time that you spent on the job, or there was beginning to be um, a little more dissatisfaction with the environment of the job, the people you worked with? or your expectations of what work should be? Like, what exactly do you think was the catalyst for you beginning to lose your passion for something that you obviously loved and enjoyed Mm -hmm. to do? The thing is, people get dissatisfied for different reasons. Absolutely. And one size doesn't fit all. Mm -hmm. For some people, as it was in my case, lack of passion, Mm -hmm. I would dig deeper into that. But Mm -hmm. for most people, it could be absence of personal growth, Maybe they're mm-hmm. not getting the growth they, they want to get on that yeah. level. For yeah. some, it's limited impact. Do you just feel that there is more I could do on this mm-hmm. particular job that mm-hmm. I'm not doing? There are not opportunities. You're not being given opportunities enough at work. For some, it is lack of autonomy. Maybe you're being micromanaged a lot. I yeah. didn't like that. For mm-hmm. some, it is that what you're doing is not compatible with your values. Mm. For some, it is poor work-life balance where... This is taking the whole of my life whilst mm-hmm. so many other things are struggling. For some, yeah. it is lack of recognition and appreciation where you're mm-hmm. giving everything you 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 can to the work to and you're not job. being appreciated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For some, it is lack of challenges on the job. Mm. You know that I'm capable of doing so much more mm. and I am not being used enough in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for some it is no path to growth not feeling seen and appreciated lack of control over the environment and lead to to no social engagement but for me i think it was i don't think i know for a fact that mm-hmm. it was just my life calling for more mm-hmm. it was just my life saying you are much more than this mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just my life trying to carve an entirely different path. It was just my destiny calling onto me. I mean, I love this. I love this because this is one of the reasons why I'm really passionate about, you know, just the things that we talk about on this podcast, because I feel like a lot of us, and I will focus on women, we, we tend to think that we don't have agency, that really we cannot go after the things we want, maybe because we feel like it's too hard or we feel like we don't see other people around us like breaking out of the the grain, so to speak, going against the grain and succeeding. So we were like, oh, well, I'll just take what comes and I'll just keep going. But somehow, maybe there's a little bit of a desire to do more and be more. But somehow we just we just feel like maybe it's just going to be too hard, you know? And I'm glad that you were talking about this because For you, it was a feeling of, I know that there is more for me, right? I know that there is more that I want to achieve and more that I want to do. about me. I Um. love it. I absolutely love that. I love that. Okay. Uh. Let's talk about when you quit that job. Tell me about your Uh your mental space, your mental (laughs) space. When you sat at home for how long did you stay at home before you found another opportunity? Okay. For the next 18 months, I wasn't looking for an opportunity because I was back in Ibado, University of Ibado, Mm -hmm. studying for my master's. Oh, I see. So for the next 18 months, it was as though, okay, I went back to school. Mm. So I didn't know that, I didn't really miss the fact that I left the job because I was occupied. Mm -hmm. After the master's, I tried to get back on the job. That was when I went to Radio Continental. Yeah. And I discovered that "Mm, this isn't working. And then I left. Mm. After I left, I would just pray because now I had gotten broke. I had, I had expended all my savings on my master's program mm-hmm. and money wasn't coming forth. I no, knew that this broadcasting job, I'm not going back to it because I know. And let me say this, Remy, don't go too far on the path you know there is no future in it. Tell me about don't that. Go 
too far. And someone could say that it's easier said because number one, you're a female. Mm -hmm. Number two, you were married at that time. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you didn't have responsibilities. I could say, yeah, you could be right. But that was my experience. It was easy and I'm not going mm. to take it. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot harder for so many people, no matter how. See, if you knock a door long enough, it's going to open up to you. Mm. Mm. Don't go too far. Again, I repeat, don't go too far in a path if you know that there is no future. Mm. There is no fulfillment. Now, I had the opportunity. I had all my links and all my contacts in the media. I could have mm. gotten back mm. when I was hungry because I got hungry. I didn't have money. Hmm. I didn't have money in my account. I was broke. Yeah. But as of then, I had started, how did I conceive the Queen's vision? Hmm. I'd been praying before then, knowing that there was so much more to me. Now, the idea to teach a location has always been there, but it was at the back burner. Hmm. In that, when I retire as a broadcaster, as a veteran, maybe after 50 or 60 years being a broadcaster, I can now relax. To mm. teaching people elocution, to teaching mm -hmm. people how to be fantastic broadcasters. That was okay. the plan. I want to dig into Quint. Okay. What it is. Okay. I think it will give people context into that transition from, you know, the the last job that you did and deciding, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go a different path. Okay. For everyone listening, I guess I need to give some context because, uh, <laughs> yes, I need to give some context because you're probably hearing a lot of names that you don't recognize. Ayofe and I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. We are from Nigeria, educated in Nigeria, and we have a lot of experiences that we can pull from. And that's what we're talking about this today. And um, yeah, but let's go back into it. Tell me about Quint and then we'll go back into really how make the connection between Quint now and where you were at that time. What is Quint and what do you do there? Okay. Quint is, the full name is Quint's Diction and Social Polish Academy. Quint is a short form for quintessential. I actually mm -hmm. wanted to register the name quintessential, but it yeah. was taken. Yeah. And again, a friend told me that, don't make your name too long. Make it short. <laughs> I decided it's okay. Let me stick with Quint. Yeah. At Quint, we offer distinct, engaging, and effective diction, social polish, public speaking, coaching to clients across the globe. So we are all about effective communication, executive coaching, public speaking coaching, social policy coaching, executive presence, and the like. I love it. I love it. Yes. I love it. So let's talk about it. You left um, the last job and you were in a space where you felt like it was time to actually go after your dream. The dream that had been on the back burner that you thought, I'll probably do that when I'm retired. What did that process look like for you to really launch into that? Hi, friend. Are you enjoying the podcast? May I ask you a favor? Please take a moment to leave a review of the show wherever you listen to podcasts. Reviews are very important and help other people find the Driven Introvert podcast. I'd really appreciate if you could rate the show and also leave a written review. You can review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now back to the podcast. Oh, how do I, how do I, how do I say this without sounding churchy? Hmm. But that's at no. my core. There's no way I can do it without going that. No way. I yeah. need someone right here because we're Absolutely. all spiritual beings. Absolutely. Everything you see in the physical, it had existed in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you could see it, Absolutely. everything you will become, you are already, you are already. Mm -hmm. Being an elocutionist, had always been there, hmm. but I didn't see it. I didn't recognize it, but hmm. I was praying. Hmm. And that's why I am an advocate for praying a lot in the spirit. Hmm. And wh when I see people don't pray in the spirit, who only pray in understanding, how do you even pray in accuracy? Hmm. How do you align with the will of God for your life? When the scripture says, eyes have not seen, ears hmm. have not heard, even the mind has not conceived. conceived. That's a way your mind can conceive what God has for you. You can hmm. only access that realm by the spirit. 
Hmm. Only by the Spirit. And how can you access it? By praying a lot in the Spirit because your understanding is limited. Very limited. I would pray and listen in the Spirit because I didn't even know. It was even a period of confusion. I didn't even hmm. know what to pray for. Yeah. I would stay there in the Spirit and sit within the soul even without knowing. Hmm. One day I was having a conversation with one of my friends. We used to live together then. And we were discussing. And out of the, I want to say out of the blues, but it's not out of, out of the blues because I know now that it mm -hmm. was out from the womb of my spirit. Hmm. I birthed it. And I just said, you know that I can, be, I can teach elocution. I can start teaching elocution. She said, oh, oh, yeah. I said, I can start doing that right now. And that's what I'm going to do. I said it casually. Yeah. But it didn't leave me. Hmm. And that was how I knew that it emanated from my spirit. It didn't just come from my, from my head. Hmm. It emanated from my spirit and I began to build on it. And guess hmm. what? The skill to teach elocution, it has always been there. Mm -hmm. And that's why the things we pick up on the way, on our journey, they're vital. Yeah. They're important. Mm -hmm. And they're instrumental to where we're going. Nothing is a waste. Even if you're doing a job you don't particularly love at the moment, mm. even if you, if you think it's servitude, even mm. if you think you are slave in a way, there is mm. something in it for you. And don't mm. miss that moment. When I was learning, I learned pronunciation and how to speak well when I was training to be a broadcaster. And it was tough. I mm. withdrew from that, from that school. Okay, mm. not withdraw, but change course, change lane. Because mm. it's a school and the course I was taking then was presentation. Mm. If any course seemed hard for you, you could switch. You could go mm. to journalism. You could go to production. You could go to science, yeah. uh, computer engineering. You could mm -hmm. switch lanes. Yeah. And when I resumed for the presentation, I saw that going for a presentation that would teach me interview skills, how to interview guests, how mm -hmm. was what I thought. Oh. But I got to the training school and I began to see vowel sounds. I said, I seen consonant sounds. And you're like, what? I seen, <laughs> seen all those charts I ran away from. That's when, so I was, when I was taking jam, jam classes. Sorry. And, and because I had a mind block that this, I can't know it. Mm. And I struggled in that class. I mm. wanted to switch lanes to journalism. Mm. And then one day, I am sure it was still my spirit telling me that, stay a little longer. Tarry here. Hmm. And it was just a shift in perspective. And I looked at my class that day. We were about 200 in class. And I looked at some of them who I thought, these people are not as intelligent, hmm. as brilliant. And hmm. they were catching up. They were scoring 9, 10. And I was scoring through. Ah, no, no, no. Something is wrong. And hmm. it was just a change in perspective that I can know this. And I'm going to hmm. know it. Hmm. Just that. I love that. Me. I went from scoring a 2 over 10. I absolutely love that. To 8. Nine, ten over ten. I eventually graduated with a distinction from mm. a course that was mm. hard just because mm. I stayed with it. Mm. Now, I used that skill to speak so well when I was broadcasting. People admired me. I would mm. meet my colleagues on the field when we go reporting and they would mm. say to me, you were fantastic on the news yesterday. Mm. You were this on the news yesterday. Mm. Many years down the line when I, want, when I started Quince, the knowledge I picked up then was what I went back to. Hmm. Imagine if I had, if I'd taken it for granted. Yeah. Imagine if I had not learned everything there the, the was to learn there. Hmm. What, would I, what, what, what would I make use of? Oh my God. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know what I loved? <laughs> Two things that you mentioned here that I really want to dig into is number one, no skills are lost. No skill is useless. Like no matter what experiences you are going through, you don't enjoy that job, but you're learning something. You don't enjoy the space you're in, but you're learning something because it's always cumulative. I remember we spoke about this when I when we started. Um, I had a podcast about seven years ago. That was 2017. That was seven years ago. And I remember I started it on a whim. 
wow. because I was uh, following up. One of my friends, then Bisola, she um, had a podcast. And I was like, ooh, this is fascinating. And I'm like, hmm, I listened to it. And then I started listening to other podcasts. I'm like, I, I love this. I want to try this out. And something I call myself today is I call myself a trier because uh. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. Like, I'm just going to try. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'm going to give it a shot. Right. And um, I remember doing that. And of course, I made all the mistakes in the book. The audio was terrible. Many <laughs> technical mistakes, you know, like I didn't. But it was good for me to take that step because I learned so much. And even, you know, I've, I've talked about this on this podcast in previous episodes, the job that I had when I worked in corporate America. I worked there for just a short time and I didn't love it. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. However, that experience taught me a lot of things that I'm able mm-hmm. to use today. So just to encourage everyone listening, don't take for granted the experiences you're having right now. Absolutely. It may not feel good. It may feel like you're wasting your time, but you're never wasting your time. I also love you mentioned the fact that you had almost like a mental block and you told yourself, I can't learn this. This is hard. I can't do it. And it's so amazing how we um, block ourselves from actually being able to learn, being able to grow, and being able to uh, just approach new things from just a different mindset because we feel like we can't do it. And I love this concept of the growth mindset. And that's what it is. A growth mindset is one that says you can learn, you can grow, you you have what it takes to Mm. actually improve your ability to learn. Mm. You don't have just a certain kind of intelligence that is fixed, rigid, and cannot be changed. That's not true, Mm. Mm. right? Everybody has what it takes to learn. Even if you feel like, there's something I tell myself, I don't like math. (laughs) It just, uh, it makes me feel like, why, right? But I know that I can learn it if I put my mind to it. And that's the key. Are you able to, just overlook all of those questions in your mind or the feeling of sometimes it's just mental laziness because we don't want to stretch. We don't want to yeah. try too hard that's and true. actually that's true. grow. I love um, that. I absolutely um, love that. Okay. So um, let's talk about starting Quince and in a place like Nigeria and in the industry where you were, I don't know if there were other people who were doing that, but I, I have a feeling, and you're going to explain that, that it was probably not a very popular thing that so many people were doing. Mm. So you were obviously stepping into uncharted territory here. You were stepping into something that y- you didn't have, you know, a lot of like uh, people to look forward to. I mean, look up to, I should say, to say, OK, this is how they've done it. And this is how I should structure my business, my dream, what I'm going into. How did you handle that? Um, sense of newness and innovation like i guess what i'm asking is do you have like a system or a framework for tackling something new you want to take on a new challenge how do you approach it where do you even start today when i tell people that i teach elocution Mm -hmm. nine percent nine over ten of (laughs) the times they would say what's that Absolutely. What's that? What is Every it? day I have to explain myself what I do. <laughs> when I say diction, they have a bit of idea, but they still mm-hmm. don't know how it relates. That pe- you make yeah. people learn diction. Yeah. You make people learn this. Hmm. And sometimes when I say that, they oh, children, you work with children. children. No, I don't work with children. I work mostly. Okay, I work with children sometimes, but I work yeah. mostly with adults. Yeah. Now, think about that eight years ago. Oh, my God. Eight years ago, it was... Today, at least personally, I've coached about 500 allocationists. Hmm. I'm not kidding. Well, 500 oh allocationists. So I alone I added about 500 allocationists into to the, the pool. pool. Absolutely. But then it was, I, I, I knew of maybe one, two, three people doing it, hmm. but they were not doing it the way I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. They their focus was in schools. They were only doing it in schools. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even interested in going to the schools. I want to work with a corporate woman, with a corporate Absolutely. man. I want yes. to work with corporate organizations, but I didn't mm-hmm. find any. But mm-hmm. again, I found one, and that's Poise Nigeria. And I would say that Poise is like the pay setter in the mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Though it, they were not fully into allocution, 
Mm-hmm. Allocation was part of what they offered. It wasn't strict allocation. Mm-hmm. They were more into the finishing aspect. Mm-hmm. Etiquette. It was a finishing school. And yeah. allocation just happens to be one of the courses. Part of the uh, courses, yeah. yeah. What I wanted to do, I didn't find anybody at that time. There could be. And I think they were, but I didn't find because they were not even visible. They were not online. Mm. They were not yes. on social media. So Absolutely. there was no way I could even reach out to them. But I knew what I wanted. Mm. And I just went after it. Mm. And what also helped me was once I was looking for other people who were doing what I was doing, I was thinking, okay, there must be a form of an association of people doing this. I searched, I didn't find the association. I started complaining. Uh-uh. Why would the woman, they, uh-uh. they must be, they must be. And one day the Holy Spirit said to me, Stop complaining. What are you going mm. to do about it? About it. Mm. And then I just went on Canva, designed a flyer, Diction mm. Coaches Meet and Greet. And we had our very first meet and greet. And for the first time I met about, I think it was about 30 to 40 allocationists sitting in the yeah, sitting in the same room. Some came serious? from yeah, some came from out of Lagos. Some came from many came from within Lagos. And we had our first meeting. Remy mm. today. Association mm. of Digital Coaches of Nigeria has chapters in almost all the states of the federation. Oh my God. Almost all the states of the federation. That is seriously because, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that. I didn't even have the full picture hmm. of what I wanted to do. But I know that the path of the just shines brighter. Yes. The path of the just is leading with light every mm. step of the way. And mm. I just kept doing it one day at a time. I just kept showing up. Hmm. At first, this was tough. Oh, God, don't, don't let's even talk about naysayers. <laughs> We're going to go there. We're going to the next. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about naysayers because, I mean, come on. Just the idea that you're stepping out and doing something no one or very few people have heard before. True. Yes. And yeah, even because you have to explain to people all the time, this is what it is. This is what I'm trying to do. And talk about family members and talk about people who you maybe you worked with before and thinking, oh, what are you doing now? You know, all the questions. And then you explain this. And I am I can imagine that some uh-huh. people probably looked at you like, what are you talking about? Just go get a job. <laughs> how <laughs> how did you deal with that? Because I recently saw I saw a post online by um, this lady, uh, Mary Morant. She's a speaker, an author. She has a podcast and I really love her. She asked the question and she said, when people belittle your dream, right, and say maybe you don't have what it takes to actually do it or this doesn't make sense, what is your reaction? Does Uh, it energize you to say, oh, I'm going to be wrong? Uh Or does it discourage you or does it not even affect you at all? Where do you fall Uh on that spectrum and how do you Uh handle that? Uh Uh The naysayers I had, and like you said, it was just because they didn't understand what I wanted mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. I remember talking to a particular mentor, and I was saying I want to teach diction and elocution. And he said, why not do MC? Why not MC? In? I said, uh-uh, I'm not doing MC. <laughs> I'm not MC. I'm not even interested in MC. I do MC, but I don't, I don't even really like it. But that was what he understood. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm seen. You understood I'm seen. You didn't understand yeah. elocution. Oh my I had God. to explain. I'm sure I didn't understand, but I moved on. Mm-hmm. My father, my parents were worried. My, my, my father said, I'm not saying you shouldn't do what you want to do, but why not do it alongside this broadcasting thing? A regular job. Do broadcasting. Yeah, do your regular job and still do this by the side. And mm. when this expands, then you leave one for one. I said, no. Mm. I told him, I said, Broadcast, doing broadcasting and doing this by the side, it's good. This would ever be, would forever be by the side. Hmm. It means that broadcasting would not have my 100%. Mm-hmm. Education would not have my 100%. And I would be average at both. Hmm. No, I don't want that. My dad said, okay, if that's what you want. And I know that he would still send me stipends. My mom would send me stipends. They oh, that that's so sweet. But well, at the beginning, at the initial points, I have friends who supported my dreams. And I would mm. never forget. Mm. Because the day I conceived the idea, that very day, Remy, that very day, I started talking to a graphics designer mm. to design a flyer. And it was mm. going to be a free training on diction. That mm. same day, I didn't sleep on it. 
Hmm. And I also was speaking with my friend, Toyo Siyo my my pastor then, Reverend Ijilabo Day, and both of them supported me. Hmm. On the day of the free training, my friend Toyo Siyo Koshaye sent me, sent small towels and water oh so I could serve the, the, the attendees, the participants. Hmm. My pastor then gave me money to book the hall. Give me 50,000. Oh on Toy wow. Street, go and book the hall. So I had support, hmm. but I also had naysayers. How did I respond to naysayers? And I just want to tell you the ways you could respond to naysayers. Let's I go. ignored them. Hmm. And I think that that is what you should do. Ignore it, but don't just ignore it. Let it propel you, just like hmm. what you said. Mm-hmm. That there's something here, and I'm going to unearth it. Hmm. Then two, respond, don't react. Hmm. Because... Reacting is trying to be defensive. Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Respond. Explain to them. Because mm. for all of the naysayers, I could say that for many of the naysayers, it's not coming from a place of negativity. No. Absolutely. It's because they love you. Mm-hmm. Because they're watching out for you. Mm. So you respond to them and don't react. Then safeguard your dreams. Mm. Safeguard your dreams. Because mm. if you're not careful... The more you listen to naysayers, because guess what? You already have doubts. You do. <laughs> Absolutely. You already have doubts. And you don't need to feed those doubts. Yes. I would think that, hey, would this thing answer? I like, know. Is there something here? Yeah. I already had those doubts. Now, listening to someone saying to me again and again that, are you sure? Hmm. Are you sure about this? Do you want to consider this? You're just doing yourself more harm. Yeah, it's just so continue to chip. It'll keep chipping at, you know, that exactly. wall that you're trying to build. And yes. before you know it, it crumbles. Yeah. Safeguard your dreams. And mm. there was, there was, there was this is popular saying that says that they say I dream too big. I say they think too small. Mm. How do you safeguard your dreams? Take control of the environment and make mm. sure that you're not letting a lot of negativity mm. come to you. People inspire you or they dream you. So you pick them wisely. Do you want to pick people? Do you want to stay around people who inspire you? Or do you want to stay around people who dream you? So you choose your company wisely and Mm. safeguard that dream. I love it. see, for any dream, especially the dream that God gave you or Mm. the dream that has your name stamped on it, Mm. it's going to take time. But when you knock long enough, that door is going to open to you. I love it. Gosh, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Because what you want is asking, Mm. how bad do you want me? Mm. Everything you want, everything you're calling, Mm. it's going to test you. How bad do you want me? Mm. Uh, And you have to prove that I really do want you. Yes. It's opened. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you for sharing that. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? I love (laughs) that picture of you going on Canva creating a flyer and doing a meetup, you know, a meet and greet for all the addiction coaches. That is such an amazing move. And I feel like a lot of us don't do something like that enough. And what do I mean by something like that? You have a dream. You have something that you really want to achieve. You're not sure. And that's the way dreams go. You're not 100% sure. You have your Mm. own doubts, you know, like you said. But if you don't figure out a way to get in a room or in a space, or connect with people who have a similar outlook on life, and you are isolated, and you keep being isolated, it's very easy for you to just wear out that dream. Like, it just goes away with time, because you're not doing anything to actually help you step out. So if if people don't have that push to say, okay, I don't know how to get started, or I don't know what next I should do, let me just figure out people who are in my space, who feel this way, who have this, you know, similar dream. And let's just draw talk. from them. Let's just mm-hmm. rub minds that. Let's just, mm-hmm. you know, connect and see what happens. And that's one of the reasons why when we started She Packed last year, that's one of the things that I, I felt like I was really led to create. Opportunities for us to stop being isolated in our different silos and figure out a way to meet people who think like you. Because there's so much power in those connections. So much power. And people are waiting. Who knows? Maybe you are the person they're waiting for. Like, we need to do this. You step out and do it. If you don't, you looked around, you couldn't find anyone. 
you know, that you could connect with who was doing this. And you put it out there and people came. People will come if we take the step. I absolutely love that. Let's talk about success, right? You have definitely experienced success, I am fair. In explaining, you know, some of the things that you've been able to achieve, you've been able to train 500 elocutionists in Nigeria. That's amazing. Like, that's like giving people so much opportunity, so much confidence, you know, in what they can do, not just providing for their family, but just being able to walk into their own passion, their own dreams, you know, their own ideas. And that's amazing, right? And there's something amazing about having something you've built from the ground up actually work. Because I feel like that's what a lot of people, like if you go online now, you people were all selling something, saying something, creating a podcast, creating a video. Why? Mm. We want to connect with people. We want to make impact and we want to make money. Let's face it, right? I feel like that's the trifecta. If we're able to do those three things, it just, it just feels more fulfilled to be working and all of that, you know. And definitely you're one of the foremost elocutionists in Nigeria. You've sold out events, you've done corporate contracts, you know, you've published books and sold courses. You have a decent following on social media. Like all of this is amazing. How does it feel? <laughs> Tell me how do you, how it feels from the other side. How does it feel to actually see just like the Bible says the work of your hands, you know, really succeed? What is that feeling like? Tell me about it. For me, I'm grateful. Let me say yeah. from that. I'm just Absolutely. I'm thankful. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful. I'm just thankful to God. Because when I look back and I remember that day mm. that God propelled that dream right from my the womb of my spirit and I set it out. Mm. I look at the trajectory and I look at the people I met right in the profession. I mm. look at the people I, I mentor, the people I coach. And I'm just so grateful. Hmm. And the thing about success is that it is very fleeting. And if you sit with the success you have today, you're on your way down. Hmm. Because after this success, the next thing is what next? Hmm. Because you need to consolidate that success. Hmm. You, because after that, what you have in your mind is what is next. And that is what many people don't understand, and they fall into a rival fallacy. What is a rival fallacy? It is just you thinking that you're going to be happy and you will feel in a particular way when you achieve mm-hmm. a particular something. Dream. Hmm. And for many of us who have achieved significant dreams over and over again, you'd realize hmm. that after that event, after hmm. a while, your life is asking for what more. Hmm. You're thinking about what else. Hmm. It means that. You have challenged yourself and you want to break your own record. Oh my God. So yesterday's success is no longer significant. Hmm. You're looking for the next day. And that's why so many Olympians, so many athletes fall into depression. Hmm. Because after you have won the Olympics, please, what next? Many youngsters are budding. You want to break your own record. Hmm. You show up the next year, someone else beat you. And yeah. then it is a cycle. Yeah, It is a cycle. Success is good. Hmm. And you have to appreciate success. If you appreciate success, it's going to help you to be thankful. Because Hmm. if you don't appreciate your success and you're always looking out for the next thing, you Hmm. also fall into the ditch of ungratefulness. And what is ungratefulness? Hmm. It is when you stand in front of people who have what you lack and you forget everything that you have. Hmm. Everything you were not able to do yesterday that you do today, you have a gratitude journal. You pause. Hmm. And you're grateful. You are thankful. Hmm. You don't live there, but you Hmm. take it up to God as a sacrifice, saying, I know this. I recognize it. You earn today more than you earned yesterday. Hmm. You have to be grateful because Hmm. it's easy for you to commonize and trivialize a 150,000 naira because you see your friends making 1 million naira. Hmm. But don't ever play that game of comparison. You are on your own journey. And Mm. how do you assess yourself? Where am I coming from? And where am I? I'm not placing my life vis-a-vis another person whose Mm. life experiences, whose journey is different from mine. Mm. So I am putting myself beside myself saying, where am I coming from? What's my trajectory? Mm. And God, I am grateful. 
where you don't stay there because even God is a God of visions. Hmm. He knows where he's taking you through. So you hmm. go through that journey, you focus on the process, you work on being present in the moment, you hmm. keep a gratitude journal because the best way to protect yourself is to be as fluid and as homeless as water. Hmm. Never bet on stability or lasting hmm. order. Everything hmm. changes. Absolutely. Everything changes. It's wow. either it changes all the way down or it goes all the way up for you. Hmm. When you stay long with the success, focusing on the success, brandishing in yesterday's success, you let and there is no there's no vacancy, there's no vacuum in life. It's hmm. either you're progressing or you're retrogressing. So hmm. be grateful for the success. Have a gratitude journal, focus on the process, work on being present in the moment, and then break your own record. Absolutely amazing. I love that. I think it takes a lot of self-awareness to be able to do that. It takes a lot of talking to yourself, listening to your own words, the words that you tell yourself, the lies that you tell yourself. I feel like sometimes we, we don't pay attention to the words going on in our own heads. Everything you've said it just makes sense. So I love that you mentioned the gratitude journal because yesterday I have a box that I put all my old journals in. And once in a while, I like to go back and bring them out and read them and read the things that I was writing, the things that God was speaking to me, you know, the dreams I was having because I dream a lot, you know, the dreams I was having, the dreams I wanted to write down the things I wanted to achieve, even the difficult circumstances I was going through. I write all of that down because it gives me perspective. It helps me remember where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And when I feel tempted to forget that I'm way beyond where I used to be, I go back and I read that. And it just reminds me that I have a lot to be thankful for. I like that you said, when you stand in front of people who have what you lack, you shouldn't forget what you have. And I've found myself in places like that. I found myself in situations where I look at myself and I'm like, in comparison to people around me, and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I have a long way to go. And it maybe starts to affect my self-esteem. And I have to remind myself, but I've come so far, you know, look at how far the Lord has brought Mm -hmm. me. And I just love that thought. I feel like it's something we all need to sit with. And like I said, it takes self-awareness to be able to do that. Because if you're the kind of person that just goes, you don't think, you don't take time to reflect. And that's why reflection is so powerful. You don't take time to reflect. It's easy Um, to miss, you know, this kind of things. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for sharing. You have made a big step. You're in a very unique position right now because you moved halfway around the world. You now live in the United States. I made that shift myself a couple of years ago. And for me at that time, it felt daunting. Does it feel like that starting over? Does it feel like you're starting over right now? How does it feel? Yes, it feels as though I am starting over, but I'm also Mm. grateful because I have a soft landing. Hmm. My husband has been here for many years. Hmm. So a friend was even talking to me yesterday who relocated to Canada about two years ago. And she was saying that, ah, I think you should be grateful. <laughs> oh, when I came here, I had to so hmm. figure things out myself. A lot of things she had to do alone because she didn't even have anybody here. Hmm. But for me, my husband, God, hmm. my husband, it's such a soft landing. Hmm. Sincerely, I don't know what hustling is right now <laughs> because just well, before this, it. just before this podcast, I was I was the one telling my husband that I have to start working. Mm. I need to. My husband said he was thinking that take your time, enjoy yourself. Yes, I still do Quince. Yeah, by the, by the side, Quince is mm-hmm. still running fully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But hey, we have to make the dollars in this America. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Amen. There's one telling my husband that I am I, I I think that I really need to go back to work. And yes, it's 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 for that part for Queens, I don't feel as though I'm starting over. Hmm. But on the other side, trying yeah. to settle in here, trying to integrate in here. But I'm grateful for my husband. Mm-hmm. The fact that he had gone ahead of me. It yes. feels so good. Yeah. It feels so good. God is and, good. And going back to Queens as well. Mm. The way I used to run Queens when I was in Nigeria just had to change. Mm. And that was where I had the most challenge and the most, I spent, it, it took me a while 
to mm. start over again because mm. yeah, it's still starting over again. Yeah. So when I got here, I had to figure out how do I restructure this? Mm. How do I make it appealing more mm. to diasporians? Mm-hmm. Knowing that even once I was in Nigeria, it's some of my clients where I'm born anyway. Mm. Now that I'm here, how do I maximize this opportunity more and better? Yeah. So that, I, 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 it took a while there. Hmm. Trying to figure out and trying to pray, and I don't, I don't have all the answers yet. But I trust yeah. the God of this journey, Absolutely. every step of the way. It gives I love me light it. and clarity. I love it. I love it. I'm so happy for you. All right. So mm-hmm. let me ask you this: You now have a different routine. Obviously, you've moved here. Um, what part of your daily? or maybe your weekly routine is really giving you joy and peace right now? What is one thing that when you think about doing or having or just being in that space every day or every week makes you feel joyful and peaceful? I mean, it's fellowship. (laughs) (laughs) I am telling you, it's fellowship with God. Hmm. In as much as... God is not someone you dump in a place. Mm, mm. God is not someone you 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 station mm. in the space of your morning devotion, thinking yeah. that okay, when I wake up in the morning, I run to the place where I keep God, I fellowship with Him, and then you walk away. I mean, you don't remember Him again mm. until the next morning when you're back there. Mm. But it's not that way. Absolutely, God should be encouraged. Mm. God should be that constant in your life where Mm. and there's a way you can factor that in i'm just Mm. in the middle of work and i come to the consciousness of god calls me daughter Mm. and just say thank you jesus thank you jesus i Mm -hmm. acknowledge you jesus Mm -hmm. most i'm thankful jesus it is Mm. carrying the father Mm. all about but what what is in my routine Mm -hmm. that gives me joy Mm -hmm. that's why when people say that they, they 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 don't like praying yeah. I also don't like long winding prayers. Yeah. Of praying and understanding anyway, because I don't yeah. have requests. Mm. I don't have requests. Mm. When they say write out a list of what you want in life. Yeah. Sally, I always exhaust my list, maybe when I get to number two or number three. <laughs> because I don't ask for things. I see. I don't, I don't do things. Mm. I don't do things. Mm. So it, it is that fellowship where you just mm. with God and you just yeah. worship, you pray. That is what excites me. I love every it. Every morning. That's what I look forward to mm. every morning. And before my husband gets jealous, right after that <laughs> is 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 a man I call it my man of all now. Because this mm. is honorable. It's just honorable. I love him. I look forward to seeing him. Mm. I look forward to him being goofy. <laughs> He's just a very goofy man. And I just love it. Yeah. So. Uh, that's so sweet. <laughs> that's awesome. Fellowship with God and your wonderful husband. That's amazing. Hi, friend. If you're still listening, you are the real MVP. Ayofe and I were close to wrapping up our conversation, but she began to share something really insightful about the power of consistency and showing up for your dream. And I had to include it because you have to hear it. There is no such thing as success or relevance or significance without consistency and mm. without showing up yeah. because that is the sum total of whatever success you see yeah. because again when you try long enough when you knock long enough the door mm. will open so stay mm. there because that is even the secret that consistency or if you don't feel like showing up show up not show up notwithstanding mm. you don't feel like hosting for me, mm-hmm. 100% of my income mm-hmm. are people I connect with online. Yes. Are, are the clients who are discovering me online. How mm-hmm. would they see me if I don't show up every day? Mm-hmm. If I'm not in their face. Mm-hmm. Um, I do that. Sometimes my production day, babe, I can be here from 9 a.m. till night, 12 midnight, I'm telling you. I'm, you know how, I mean, a, every content creator knows that for a yeah. minute, Video, you know what mm-hmm. goes into it. You're absolutely so you know, yeah, you know how long yes. it takes to edit, you know how long it takes to shoot. Hmm. You don't have to do that. Hmm. I do that, that's the price you're paying because for everything working, someone is working it. 
Hmm. For every successful person you see, there are sacrifices they are paying that hmm. you know nothing of. Hmm. So before you get 10 years of anybody, think about what sacrifices are they making that I am not making. So you don't even have any basis for comparison. I love you it. just keep showing up, whether you feel like or not. And it's even very connected to our fellowship. So the mm. source of life, the source of dreams, mm. the source of ideas. Mm. How do you become a person who enjoys his presence? It's by just showing up. You wake up in the morning, you set your alarm. Whether you feel like or not, you drag yourself yeah. out of the bed and you go there. Mm. Knowing that, I don't have any way. This is my way. Mm. If it doesn't give me ideas, I have none. If it doesn't give me light, I'm in obscurity. Mm. If it doesn't say yes, I'll always meet a no everywhere I go. So mm. knowing that God is the only source and, the, and my only factor of unfair advantage in life, oh, that keeps dragging you back there. Mm. So for anyone who is, who just wants to show up on the map of the world mm. and be relevant and be significant, mm. just keep showing up and mm. keep doing what you need to do mm. to stay relevant. Which is the Powerful. That's for everything working. There's someone working it. There's something working it. So do the work. Because the secret of manifestation is in the place, is in the secret place. It is what you're doing when nobody's watching. Before we turn this place to a show, Shirley, let's say the grace. <laughs> I love you. The grace of Allah, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. I am in awe of God in you. I see just the mm. just the power of God, just the wisdom that you have and the power That's that you carry. And I know that there's so much That's more ahead of you. There's so much That's more ahead of you than where you are That's right now. God. And I just cannot That's wait God. to see you shine. I can't wait to see God just showcase you, you know, That's where God. he really wants you to be. That's amazing. Thank you so That's much for God. joining me. Thank okay? you for oh, I really me. appreciate Thank it. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. If you want to learn more about Annual Fair, I will leave all of the links to her website, how you can contact her and all that information in the show notes. So please be sure to check it out. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Driven Introvert Podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to click the follow button on your podcast app or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. As always, don't forget to take courage, trust God, and go pursue your big ideas. See you next time. The Driven Introvert Podcast is produced by SheParked.com and Remy Roy with content, editing, and strategy expertise from Candice Zakaria and Aisha Tolarawaju. Want to ask a question or share a comment on a future episode? Email us today at thedrivenintrovert at SheParked.com or click on the link in the show notes to record your question in a voicemail. Hey friend, do you know your strengths? I know you want to live a fulfilling life, right? You want to feel like your life is your own and not like you're in the wrong movie acting the wrong part. But do you know your strengths? Are you operating from your strengths at work and in your calling? Or does everything feel hard and like a chore? I know what it feels like to not know where you belong. And for me, discovering my strengths and really taking steps to deploy them effectively has been very crucial to helping me feel more fulfilled and excited about life. If this resonates with you, if you'd like to find out more about your strengths, I have a free gift for you. It's called the Uncover Your Strengths Free Guide. In this guide, you'll find tools, tests, and resources to help you find your strengths. There'll be space in there to write down your discoveries There'll be reflection questions to help you dig deeper and prayers to help you seek the Lord for wisdom on how to move forward. I hope you lean into this. I hope you not only download this guide, but also use it, grow and be empowered to pursue your next steps in faith, work and life. You can get it today at shepacked.com slash strengths. The link will also be in the show notes. That's shepacked.com slash strengths.